This is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. And this is one you guys have been waiting for, whether you're a new raw foodist, somebody getting new into raw foods, or somebody long time old school raw foodist. This video is going to open your eyes as to what raw foods is really about. Many people have you know no idea about what raw foods are about. I guarantee you guys, after you watch this video, you will definitely know if something is raw or not, and if you may want to eat it or not. So, did you know that there are no raw food labeling laws? Yes, I'll repeat that. There are no raw food labeling laws. You know, this mesquite powder is labeled raw. This kombucha is labeled raw. You know, the Nam and Shoyu is labeled raw. I mean, these are all raw food products that may be commonly accepted as somebody would eat on a raw foods diet, but it may or may not really be raw, and they may or may not really be healthy for you. Just because it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy is what I like to say. And in this episode, you guys are going to learn truly about that. I was recently in Houston, Texas, gave a phenomenal presentation there that now you guys are going to get to benefit from. So after watching this video, you guys are going to learn if something's truly raw and healthy or not. So I guess without further ado, let's get into the video. Thank you everybody for coming. Now can everybody hear me? Yes. Alright good. It's, I'm, I've been gifted with a loud voice. Uh, how many of you guys have watched my videos? Wow, this is cool. Like most people have watched my videos online and I mean it seems like I'm shouting in some of my videos but I really just do talk loud. Like I swear. <laughs> and especially when I get extra passionate and excited about something like some of the videos I do with Jameth. How many people saw the videos I do with Jameth? <laughs> Couple, cool. Awesome. So, um, let's see. So you can hear me and uh, the talk I'm going to give tonight is called Just Because It's Raw Doesn't Mean It's Healthy. And uh, the reason for this talk specifically is because I went to a raw foods event in Portland, Oregon, outside Portland in Malala, Oregon. It's a raw foods retreat. But before I get into my story, how many people have actually heard my story on why I got into raw foods myself or know it? Okay, good. I think I might go over that really quick because that's actually really important. I always like to tell my story. I mean, I could give a whole talk just talking about my story, like for two hours, but I'll give you the really condensed version. So what happened to me and why I got into raw foods was because what happened was after college, I remember playing broom ball with my fraternity brothers. And I was a chapter advisor at that point uh, for my fraternity. And like the next day, I was stricken with spinal meningitis. So how many people know what spinal meningitis is? So like a, a whole bunch actually. So it's actually a, it gives, it's a potentially fatal disease that you can get that can be viral or bacterial. And basically there's like, for the viral version, there's no treatments. And unfortunately, what I had was the viral version of spinal meningitis. So I was put in the hospital. I, all I remember is that I had a really bad headache and then they had to do a spinal tap to just make sure that that's what I had. And the doctor said that's what I had. And then I was in intensive care and I asked the doctor, when am I gonna get out of here? And he said the words that nobody ever wants to hear, especially when you're just graduated out of college. He said, you might not make it out of here. And I'm like, thinking, oh my gosh, this can't be happening. Like, this is not supposed to happen to you until you're like way old. <laughs> and I was way young, so, um, and, he, I, and he said there was nothing he could do for me. I mean, he's gonna keep me on the IV and all this stuff, but basically there was no treatment for a virus. So luckily I can only say through higher powers that I made it through that situation because there was nothing that the medical system could do at that time when I was in the hospital to basically fix me. And, you know, all growing up, like, I thought the whole medical system, the Western medicine, was like, you get sick, you go to the hospital, they make you better, and you go home. Like, we'd always go to, my, then my dad would take us to the hospital, because as me and my brother were children, we'd get, like, really bad ear infections. I had allergies, eczema, skin conditions, and asthma as a child. So we always go, and they seem to give us a drug, and we'd go home, and we'd feel all right. Now, was that really the drugs fixing us, or was that our body healing itself, you know? And we're all led to believe that it's the drugs that, that heal you. You know, the drugs, in my opinion, may reduce the suffering or mask the symptoms, but it, in my opinion, most of them do nothing to heal the problem. So anyways, when I was in the hospital I'm, I'm, and I was almost not gonna make it out alive, I had a lot of time to think. And I thought, because what else can you do? You're in the hospital, it looks like, I, ha I had the TV on there and it, <laughs> watching TV and like just, it just smells bad and it's just, you, it's a place you just don't want to be. And But I thought a lot about stuff and I really thought like, okay, John, even if you had that 
Corvette Stingray with the T-tops that you want, or you have the million dollars, or you had whatever you want, what good would it do you right now, even if you had $2 million in the bank? Could you write a check, Mr. Doctor, $1 million, do not cash unless John walks out alive? I mean, all the money in the world could not have saved me at that point. So I really thought, man, maybe money is not even that important. And then I thought, well, what is important if money is not important? I'm like, man, my health is important because I'm almost going to lose it right now. So I, it's like, I really had some revelations while I was in the hospital, and I, I, I prayed a lot that I made it out of there, and I, and I thought about, like, man, so if I'm not supposed to just, like, live to work and make a lot of money and, and have this house and 2.2 kids and one dog and all this kind of stuff, like, what am I supposed to do with my life? And I thought more, and I'm like, well, maybe I should just, like, if I get out of here, I'm going to live in service because money is really not that important. If I get out of here, I'm going to share with people what I've learned that helped me to still be alive because I really value my life. So that's why, you know, that's why I do the work I do today. And I put out so many videos, like, I try to put out one video every other day to help people either grow their food, eat raw foods more successfully, or show them about the juicers and the equipment that allow them to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. Welcome. <laughs> Plus, the other thing is that I gotta keep myself out of trouble. So this is a good thing to do, that's positive, that keeps me out of trouble from doing other stuff. And yeah, don't drink, don't smoke, and don't do drugs. <laughs> so. All right, so let's see, uh, back to the story. So that's why I got into uh, uh, raw foods, because of my health. So I got out of the hospital, I asked the doctor, okay, Mr. Doctor, why did I get the spinal meningitis in the first place? And he said, well, John, you have what's called complement immune deficiency. And those are some nice, big, fancy words for basically saying you have a you know, chronically weak and depressed immune system based on your genes. So um, at that point, all I knew is that I had a weak immune system and my genes were maybe defective according to the doctor and that all I knew is that I needed to do something to change that situation so that, you know, somehow I made my genes stronger or I made my immune system stronger so that I didn't end up in a hospital again because he said, while I did fight this battle, it's not like the spinal meningitis is still alive in me somewhere, like maybe cancer might be if you get over it. I mean, it was gone, but I could get another, you know, virus of anything. So how many, how many people saw the Boy in the Bubble movie back in the 70s? I don't know if they remade that. Wow, a lot of you guys. So the Boy in the Bubble movie, that was like the extreme case, right? That was like the Boy in the Bubble had to live in the bubble and not get anything or else he might lose his life. And like, that's here, and then like the regular person's here and they could fight out diseases. I might be like more towards the middle, towards this side. So more susceptible. So when I left the hospital, all I know is that I needed to do something different. And it took me some while searching and finding, and this was back in 1995 when I started and got into raw foods, I found that basically through juicing, I could build my immune system. I saw a juice man infomercial, Jay Cordes, a juice man, an infomercial that said, by juicing, you could build your immune system. That's all I needed to hear. I got on the phone or the juicer and started juicing. And then about six months later after juicing, I picked up a book called Cleanse and Purify Thyself by Dr. Richard Anderson. He talked about colon cleansing and uh, getting your body alkaline. And he wanted, me, he wanted me to buy like $200 worth of supplements and all kinds of stuff, sell them in bet night and herbs and take it every one and a half hours and then get colonics and all this crazy stuff. And so I cleaned out and then in the book he says, oh, and so the other thing that I mentioned is that after I did that cleanse, which was $200 and a lot of money, I figured, the worst thing that's gonna happen is that I'm gonna lose the $200 and lose two weeks of eating food that I'm used to, <laughs> which was mostly a juice diet and I didn't eat red meat at that time. So I figured, okay, I'm just gonna do it. So I did it and I remember just one day, actually I still remember it in my brain, I remember taking a shower in my shower that I was at, in a house I was renting on the golf course in Rohnert Park, California. And I remember like looking at my skin and like as a child, as I had mentioned, I had eczema and I had ichthyosis, which is like dry, bad dry skin condition. And always as a child, you know, I get teased because of my dry skin condition. And it's not fun whether you're getting teased for your, you know, your skin, uh, you know, dryness, your skin color or, or whatever it is, your, your weird haircut. It's just not fun being the different one. So like I always kind of like stunted as a child growing up because like I wasn't really socialized because I was always like the outcast and stuff and it just wasn't too fun and so like when I was a kid I'd go to the doctors and we had a special dermatologist me and my brother would go to and like they gave us hydrocortisone creams and 
all kinds of stuff and nothing ever really fixed me. And actually, if you look at my hands, that's why my hands look prematurely aged. It's because of hydrocortisones, which are steroids, which are really not a good thing. This is what they do to your hands. And it probably also aids me on the inside too, which I hopefully I think I've, uh, you know, uh, negated at this point. But, uh, but they, yeah, they prematurely age you and they never, they never really healed my issue. They just kind of masked the issue and maybe like didn't make me itch a little bit. And then like one of the things my pediatric doctor said, cause I'd always have this skin condition. I said, hey doctor, you know, cause doctors are, we like, we looked up to them and they have all the answers, right? I said, hey doctor, um, when is my skin condition gonna go away? Do you have a drug or something you could give me? Cause I'd always get teased, right? It's, it was like really a big part of my life when I was younger. And they said, he told me, he's like, okay, John, when you're 13, your hormones will kick in and then, you know, your hormones are changing and you won't have your skin condition anymore. So, like, I think he told me that when I was, like, 10. So then when I was 11, you know, nothing changed. I was 12, nothing changed. My 13th birthday was probably, like, a really happy day or one of the happiest days of my life when I was a kid because I'm like, okay, I was so looking forward to your 13th birthday. I'm going to be a teenager, man. I'm going to wake up and my skin condition is going to be gone. Well, guess what? I woke up and what happened? Nothing changed. So I was like, oh, the doctor's wrong. So I don't know, maybe that planted the seed in me when I was younger about the whole Western medicine thing. Not that they're not good, but you know, in a lot of things, they may not have it right in my opinion. So fast forward to the cleanse that I was on. After the cleanse, I was in the shower, taking a shower, and I looked at my whole body and it was just like normal, like a normal person. I started crying in the shower. I was like, oh my God, my skin's normal. I mean, that meant so much for me. And I don't remember now if I was crying because it meant so much that my skin was normal, or that I had to eat this raw foods diet because they said if you're gonna go on this cleanse and cleanse out, you can't go back to what you're doing before or else everything's gonna go come back. So I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So at that point, I pretty much said, I'm gonna go 100% raw at that point. And I wasn't able to maintain 100% raw um, in the early years, but I have maintained since that time, 99.999% raw. So, you know, every, like everybody, I'm not perfect. And I had the bouts with baked vegan potatoes and no, no oil. You know, McDougal burritos, because I live in California near Dr. Uh, John McDougal and stuff, and but whatever. But I felt the difference when I ate those foods going from raw. I mean, the next day I'd wake up and my energy level would be way lower. Like, I usually just get up, jump out of bed, raring to go, but the day I ate the cooked foods, I mean, I'm not going to say they're bad, but for me, what happened was I just, like, didn't have the amount of the same high energy level that I normally do. So to sum my whole story up, I, I pretty much got into raw foods for specifically my health, to rebuild my health because in my mind, even to this day, I have, okay, if I eat things that are not healthy for me that are cooked, then I could end up back in the hospital and I don't want to end up back in the hospital where the doctor's saying, you might not make it out alive again. And I, go, I think, you know, okay, raw foods are healthy and I'm gonna be cool and I'll be healthy for the rest of my life and have a, a lot of energy to do whatever I want to do. And that's really important because, you know, I want you guys, some of you guys might have got into raw foods for your health. Some of you guys might have got into raw foods for your weight. Some of you guys might have got into raw foods because it's the next logical step if you're a, a, you know, vegan or whatever, you want to eat more raw foods. But I specifically got it into it for my health. And uh, since the day I've started, one of my principles in life that I try to live my life by is called CANI, C-A-N-I, stands for Constant and Never Ending Improvement. So whatever I'm doing today, I always try to do it more efficiently tomorrow, whether that's building a garden or whether that's my diet. And all these years, 18 years that I've been doing raw foods, I've been trying to always like improve just a little bit. And probably one of my major latest improvements, because I was already eating a really good diet, was you know to improve my diet at a certain point. I had to start growing my own food because growing my own food was better than even the organic food I was buying because I could do even a, a far better job than anything I could even buy. And uh, even to this day, I still constantly research and a lot of the research ends up in the videos that I put online to share with you guys when I go to the uh, health trade shows for the industry to find out new products, uh, you know, that may have good nutrients in it for me. And then I try to find, instead of buying that in a supplement form, I'm like, well, why don't I just grow the plant and eat it? So, you know, a lot of things that you might buy in a bottle, stinging nettle, you know, powder or you know, whatever, you could even grow spirulina in your kitchen in a fish tank if you learn how. Instead of buying it powder, just eat it fresh if you want to eat spirulina. Or instead of, you know, buying your kale, grow your kale. I'm helping my friend Kyle here putting a garden in the back, which I'll have a video on. And this is a great place here in Houston to grow a garden. I'm envious in some ways because you guys could grow some cool things that I can't even grow in California, like, uh, like 
papaya trees grow here really well and don't seem to be too affected in the winter time where in California they'll just get too cold. So yeah, I always try to continually improve. And now that brings me, I guess, up to the point where we're gonna get into the actual talk. Just because it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy. And I'll go back to telling that story when I was at that uh, retreat in Portland after I drank some of the raw water. So a lot of things that happen in my life, talks I give or like videos I make are because of specific reason. I like to think of my videos for those of you guys that t tune into my videos is like, always in my videos I like to like, not just show like what I'm doing, but I always like to have like a moral to the story. Like in the Leave it to Beaver that I watched when I was a kid, like the beaver would always go through his trials and tribulations at the end. There's always like a moral to the story. I always like to have a moral or like several good points that if you pay attention to my videos, you will learn at the end of them. And uh, that, this is a specific example. So the reason why I came up to, with this talk tonight is because I was at a raw food retreat and you would think, okay, at a raw food retreat, you know, all the food's gonna be healthy and you're gonna feel great and energized after it and stuff. And I go to this retreat every year. Hopefully they have it again this year because they've kind of been on the financial brink. It's a great retreat. It's called the Living and Raw Spirit Retreat. And um, what happened was we all, it was, it's a really cool event because you go there, you stay in cabins, and then you basically all day they have different talks you could go to or nature walks or like wild food walks. I give a couple talks every year. And then they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Normally breakfast is a buffet, so they have tables set up with like cut up fruit and like I don't know, sometimes pancakes and raw pancakes and I don't know, all kinds of stuff to eat. You could select what you want. For lunch, it's the same thing. They have a big buffet with salad, different dressings. And I mean, it's just really nice because you don't have to fix anything. And then for dinner, it's always like a catered meal. So it's usually like two or three course meal where they bring out like a super salad, a main dish, and then they bring you a dessert. So that's it's kind of, it's like eating out at a raw food restaurant every night. So anyways, one of the nights I go to eat and uh, they bring out the soup first and I'm eating the soup and it's like a carrot avocado soup and stuff. And I mean, it tastes all right and I eat it all. And then right after I'm done eating it, like I start getting a headache. And it's like, whoa, this is really weird. I'm getting a headache. Like, like normally when I eat food, like at my house, out of my garden, I never get a headache. So like something must have been wrong with the food. I don't know if it was like not organic conventionally with pesticides or, you know, I don't know what was going on, but I'm like, okay, John, you're just really sensitive. And I am really sensitive. I'm more sensitive than I think most people because I'm, I think I'm so clean and then it just, things affect me more because my body's trying to detox it and get it out. Like I've, if I eat certain conventional produce items, I'll break out in a rash like that night, the next day. And I'm like, oh, I ate something, you know, that was kind of toxic to me. But then it comes and goes and then it's over. So whatever, no big deal. And normally that doesn't happen unless I did a raw food restaurant. But when I eat things, it's like I eat 95% organic stuff and a small amount of non-organic and stuff when I can't find it organic. So anyways, I got a headache and I would think, okay, no big deal, John, you got a headache, you're just sensitive, you know, let's go on with the dinner and enjoy it. Because I've made a stink about things far too, <laughs> far too many times in some cases, and I just like, oh, I don't like making stinks if I don't have to. So what happened was somebody else at the table said, you know, hey, I ate the soup and now I don't feel good, and she verbalized it, so it must have been kind of bad. And I'm like, whoa, okay, this is not cool. I felt it, this lady felt it. And then I see somebody else from another table get up and she's kind of just like walking out the room like she doesn't look good. And then I'm like really curious. And that's, I think, another trait that I have that's really helped me succeed at the raw foods diet is being curious. Because if you question everything, no matter what it is, you know, it's always gonna push you to move forward. But if you accept everything, then, you know, you might get stuck in a dogma and you might not do so well. So I, I got up, like ran after her, and caught up to her and I'm like, hey, what's, what's going on? It's, it, I, it looks like you don't feel so good. And uh, I was wondering what's, what's going on if I could ask. And she's like, well, I just ate the soup and I don't feel so good. I'm gonna go lie down in my cabin. And then I'm like, okay, John, something's going on. You gotta find out what's up. Cause this is not cool. Like people are literally getting sick from the food they're serving at the raw food retreat. This is not cool. So then I like ran into the kitchen. I tried to be calm, cool and collected, but I think I was a little bit charged up a little bit. And, uh, I asked the chef, okay, chef, like, and he was a famous chef from a New York restaurant that they may still own. I've been there a while. And then I'm like, okay, what's in the soup? And he started listing off the ingredients. Okay, we got carrot juice, we got avocados, we got this, we got that. We got Bragg's liquid aminos. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, it's the Bragg's. So uh, for many people that may or may not know and have or have not researched this, like back in the late 1990s, there was a big, internet thing and you could google it you could google like bragg's liquid aminos space msg 
So basically it came out that Bragg's liquid aminos, and how many people still use that? <laughs> A couple of people. Um, contains naturally occurring MSG in their fermentation process, wherever they make it, it's part of the natural process. Not to say that it's bad, because in all Chinese food there's pretty much MSG, but you know, I'm particularly sensitive to MSG because I really don't even eat that in my diet, and except for that time. And maybe the chefs put a lot of that stuff in there so that it was negatively affecting many people. So then I just said, oh, okay, MS, uh, the Bragg's in there has MSG, and I'd like to talk, to talk to the chef because a lot of people in raw foods, if they got into raw foods not for their health, they didn't see that thread on the bulletin board way back in the 1990s, or they haven't really researched things. You know, they see, you know, one chef in one recipe book use Bragg's, and then the next chef said, oh, that person used Bragg's, it must be raw. I'll put it in my recipe book, and I'll use it as a flavoring agent, and then that person copies this person and then like it just keeps going around and people keep using it because nobody really knows what it does because that person using that person using it. it must be alright because everybody else uses it so I said well hey do you know that Bragg's contains naturally occurring MSG and he's like he's like no I never heard that and I'm like well yeah I got a headache and some other people like out out there like is, aren't feeling good after they ate the soup and you know you might want to consider using something else like if you just want a salty flavor it's probably healthier to actually add sea salt or, or, you know, or some seaweed or something, you know, or juice some celery juice to make it salty or, you know, shred the celery and the dehydrate to make some salt substitute or something. And then he was like, he kind of felt I was attacking him and I guess I could have a kind of strong personality sometimes and stuff. And then I guess uh, maybe one of the other ingredients in there was the cashews. And then I had to like go into my whole lecture on him about like cashews, uh, you know, on how they aren't raw. And actually I have one in my backpack upstairs. I should have brought it down. I have a, a real cashew in the shell. And the reason why cashews aren't raw is because the cashews in the shell, if you try to break it open like the one I have upstairs, if we try to break it open, it's gonna, it's caustic, it's gonna burn your hands because there's uh, naturally occurring chemicals in there so that animals don't eat the, the cashew nut. Yeah, they, people, the, the animals could eat the fruit, but not the nut because why is the nuts around? Why are the cashew nuts around? It's so that the, the tree could drop the the nut and then the tree could reproduce. I mean, every plant animal on earth wants, I mean, it's number one objective is to reproduce. So here's the cashew nut in the shell. So don't break this open or anything. If you want to try it, you can, but I, then I got to film you so I can show people what happens. So I don't recommend doing that. We'll pass it around to people. You can just check it out. But that's the cool like cashew nut. So like I went to Costa Rica and in Costa Rica, I stayed at this butterfly sanctuary, which is really cool. And they had this big cashew apple tree and it had all these little fruits on it that were like red and orange color depending on the ripeness. And they look, look like a little Christmas tree and then that little nut appendage is on the top of it. So it's not even like inside the middle of the fruit like many fruits. What happened was you could eat the, the fruit. I didn't particularly care for it because it was actually highly astringent and it just didn't agree with me. But my girlfriend at the time, she actually literally liked them. But what happened is those would drop on the ground, they would rot, the animals would eat that. but then you'd see all those little nut appendages that's um, going around on the ground and not even the animals were eating them. Not even the monkeys or any of the creatures in nature because they know, you know, it's caustic, it's, it's not good for them. And then I asked the guy that, you know, ran the butterfly sanctuary place, I'm like, hey, what, what happens to those nuts there? He's like, well, I'm like, can you eat them raw? He's like, no, he's like, we got to take them in and then we like, we fry them in the pan and then that, that like gets rid of the toxic chemicals. So like the majority of the raw cashews that you find in the bulk bins have been heat processed to take them out of the shell. Although there are some varieties of really raw nuts, the cashews that have been taken out with, you know, um, with people with gloves on and special equipment to keep them raw. But you know, even if you eat the raw cashews, in my opinion, like nature does not want us to eat those. If we didn't have special tools or gloves, we wouldn't be eating them. Plus for me specifically, like I, if I eat cashews, like just raw cashews and I chew them and I swallow them. I'll see some pieces come out the other side. Plus I don't like feel that good afterwards. Like if I ate the same volume of macadamia nuts, you know, and I chewed them up, they would number one, taste better. Number two, digest better. And I would feel better after I eat them too. And maybe that's because they're cooked, but even the really raw ones, I don't feel optimal after. And this chef didn't know that either. And then we got in a hole. He thought I was like really threatening him in, but whatever. So the whole point was the Braggs was in there and it wasn't healthy. And I'm like, man, this is really ter terrible because I went back to my seat and I'm like, what can I do other than tell the chef? But how can I let everybody here know? Like, I don't want to be the bad guy and like stand up and give a talk. 
yeah, you can't eat Bragg's, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat this, it's all toxic because this Bragg's has MSG, this has this, this has this, cacao has theobromine, blah, 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 blah. And there's so many things, and like, I don't wanna do that. And one of my goals in life is to not just like teach people information, but I really want to inspire people to teach themselves and figure things out themselves. Because I, you know, I don't want to just have the list of stuff. So I went back to my cabin that night and I scribbled on an eight and a half piece, eight and a, eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. Like, like, okay, John, my problem was how can I give a lecture? Because on the last day of this raw foods retreat, there's an open period time where anybody, any attendee, could give a class. Say you're a dance instructor, you could actually have a dance class in that one hour. Say you teach piano, you could actually you know, teach piano or play piano for people. Say you do wild wee walks, you can have a wild wee walk that hour. And I'm like, okay, John, what talk are you gonna give? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give a talk on this talk. Just because it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy, but how am I gonna do it? And I had no idea. So what I came up with was a talk today based on a need because some people didn't know just because it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy. Like, just not all raw foods, because Bragg's used to be labeled raw, Bragg's and Graminos. And actually, I think they took off the words raw on the package now. It doesn't say raw anymore if you look closely. And it used to. So this is what I came up with on the way to do it. And thank God it's not just me yelling at you guys for the next hour or half hour or whatever it is. This is audience participation. And that's why this is one of the funnest talks I give. So you're all going to be expected to participate. And don't worry, I'm not going to go around and point and call on people. This is a voluntary audience participation. So the first part of this talk is, number one, I want to say that there are no raw food labeling laws. Does everybody stand, understand that there's no raw food labeling laws? So what does that mean? So I don't know, maybe back like 20 years ago, anybody could put the words organic on any package and it could basically mean anything they want. Nowadays, if something says organic and has a USDA seal, it at least means something. Some people say that it doesn't mean as much as it used to. Some people say it's good, but whatever. It means something because there's a specific law that says, if it says, if it says organic on it, it means this. And uh, you know, with raw foods, anything could say raw or even the word natural, because those still have no legal definition. And you know, I mean, uh, uh, if, uh, if we see that, you think, oh, it's raw, I could eat it. You know, like I go to the raw, uh, or I go to the Natural Products Expos, which is the trade show for the health food industry. Every trade show I go to, I usually make a video about so you guys can see the latest products. Um, but the other thing is I always look for new raw products. And every time, there's always new raw food products. And every time I go to the raw food booth and have the new raw food products, and I like to check the ingredients labels. And many of the raw food products now, like the Hail Mary brand, they use things like maple syrup. And in my opinion, maple syrup, or actually, in fact, maple syrup is definitely not raw. So why can't they put raw on there when they're using maple syrup? Or this company, Raw Revolution, had some bars that had like chocolate chips in it. I mean, not just cacao nibs, I mean, full on baked, however they make chocolate chips in their bars, but it said raw in there. I mean, to me, that's definitely not raw. And there's all kinds of new products coming out all the time that say raw that may or not be, may or not, may or may not be raw. And I've, for a long time, I'd like research. I mean, I still usually do. If I, there's a new product, I really research it. Like when Agave first came out, I learned about it at one of the trade shows way back in like 1999. And this is the other thing to think about. Like before that time, like raw agave or even agave syrup was just nowhere in existence. It's a food that was created in our generation now that is now being fed to millions or trillions of people all around the planet. I mean, it's not like, you know, in the long time ago, there were just like leafy greens we could eat that was on the planet that, yeah, they probably hybridized a little bit since then, but this is a totally new food that was never before eaten in human history. So I researched agave, and at that point I determined it was not really raw based on how it was processed. And actually I wrote an article about it, about how it was not really raw. But yet so many people in raw foods use agave all the time, despite it not being raw, or if it is raw, or whatever, just because it says raw and it's low glycemic. And I have an issue with like things, I mean, as people, we always try to like compartmentalize and have blinders on. Oh, it's low glycemic, so it must be good. But what about, that's only one aspect of a food, the glycemic index. There's so many different other aspects of a food, like how nutrient dense is it? Does it have other nutrients in there? How high in calories is it? So many different things. So basically the fact of the matter is there's no raw food labeling laws. So anything could say raw, like 
cacao nibs could say raw and are they really raw? I don't really know. <laughs> this raw water, raw living spring water, this says really, this says raw and is it really raw? I mean, did they heat water, really? I mean, I talked to the guys of this, this uh, company actually at the trade show and I have a really good interview and talked to them about it and questioned them for like a half hour and I truly believe if you gotta buy a bottle of water, this is probably the best stuff you could buy. Now aside from that fact, I get, so no raw food labeling laws, so now what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you guys some simple principles that you could uh, put up these principles or criteria to any food that says raw, any new food that says raw, any food in your cupboard that says raw, the criteria that we're gonna come up today as a collective group to determine if it's raw or not and if you should put it in your body or not. So this it's this is super simple. We're gonna write on here, uh, what does raw mean? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll um, give the play-by-play. Play. So what does raw mean? That's what it says. Now we're gonna come up with a number of criteria all the way down, and I'll leave this up after the class, and I'll announce each one as we put it up. Um, you know, what we collectively as a group come up with, because to me there seems to be some kind of disconnect between what we inherently know is raw, and then what we pick up as raw and put into our bodies, because it may not meet this criteria. So this is a kind of fun process. And after we come up with our criteria, we're gonna put up this criteria to some of the foods that I have in the box here. And uh, we'll see if they're raw or not. So uh, does anybody have a criteria they would like to add? Yes. No heat treatment. No heat treatment, all right. So should we uh, maybe specify that more clearly? So um, not heated above 118 degrees or 105. I mean, whatever the number is, we got to put that number up. I mean, I went to the New York City, gave this talk, and those guys, they like harangue me the worst. But I'm like, so like, usually I'll just put a blank and you fill in the number. I personally would say 118, you might say 105, you might say 100. Some people would say 140. And to be honest, the, that temperature is like, it's not just the temperature. Something hit 118, it's dead now. No, you know, it's time and temperature plus the item. So like, you could heat really raw, I don't know, um, sunflower seeds in your dehydrator at 140, take them out, and they're still gonna sprout. But if you do that with something else, it might denature the enzyme. So we'll just put up there, not heated above 118, or fill in the blank if you're taking notes on the temperature. Not heated above 118 degrees. All right, anybody have another criteria that they'd like to see up on this board that we will actually all collectively vote on, actually, so should we vote on that one? Does everybody agree, or the majority of people agree, that a raw food should not be heated above 118 degrees? All right, so I think we got the majority there. Great, so anybody have another, another criteria they'd like to put up on the board there? Not irradiated. Not irradiated. So does everybody agree that we should put not irradiated on the board there? Yeah. Show of hands. All right, that's an easy one, not irradiated. Unfortunately, most foods, you'll never know if it's really irradiated. I think they do irradiate like some dried herbs and right now the food that I know they're irradiating and they do mark in the, in the case, if you buy them by the case, but not on the label is like tropical fruit. So if you go to buy dragon fruit, long on, um, sometimes lychee or rambutan at like the Asian markets, they probably have been irradiated. To check, you wanna ask the guy that works here, if you can see the box, there'll be like a little Radura symbol. It looks like some one of those symbols you'd see on something like some sci-fi channel show. All right, so uh, anybody have another criteria we'd like to see up there, yes? So what does irradiated mean? So Irradiated is like if you put your food through the x-ray machine at the airport when they check your bags. It's kind of like irradiated. I mean, it's, it's, that's the, the concept. B basically, it's like when you irradiate something, it changes the molecular structure and uh, potentially may make it toxic. Um, I mean, like when we get x-rays, that's like radiation. And uh, when we get x-rays, you know, they put like whatever that lead stuff over your private parts so that you can still have babies. So if we're supposed to do that to like when we got baby, when we're getting x-rays, we can still have babies. Uh, you know, who knows what it does to our food. Why would they do it though? Why would they do it though? Good question. So they do that basically for to kill bugs, specifically the tropical fruits. Like 
they're afraid that if they don't irradiate stuff to kill the bugs and all this stuff, that it'll like they'll have some new fruit fly outbreak or some crazy thing. Or I mean, that's that's on the surface level, but then you could even get more sinister about all this conspiracy th stuff too. And actually, oh, this is the worst. One time at the wholesale produce terminal, I saw that the irradiated mangoes. And at least it was marked. And I was like, but in general, I don't think they irradiate mangoes. So I haven't seen that again. Or they're not marking it. And I don't think there's any law that says they have to mark it. So if you eat local, you're probably guaranteed against irradiation. All right, so any other criteria that you guys want to add to the list? I mean, come on, guys. This is Houston, you guys. You guys got to come up with stuff. Usually at a talk, I'll come up with like, at least eight, sometimes a dozen different criteria. Organic? All right, so let's talk about that. So should we put, uh, must be organic? So like the question I have for that is, I mean, I can see irradiated because it definitely shouldn't be irradiated, but, but we can put organic if you guys want. But the thing is, say you live in the middle of Tennessee somewhere and you can't get organic food or you could get organic carrots, but you can't find organic bananas or whatever. Is that person not raw because they can't find organic food? You know? So, okay, so let's have a vote. Should we put up organic on our list? All right. So any, ha, does anybody else have any other criteria? Yes. What about non-GMO? Non-GMO. All right. I mean, I'm definitely with you on that. So non-GMO, show hands. Yep, non-GMO for sure. Not GMO. All right, number four. Whole unprocessed food, thank you. I was waiting for that one. So a raw food should be whole and unprocessed. And then, you know, somebody might say, John, well, what about if I take a carrot, put it through my juicer? The juice is processed. Is that not raw? So instead of saying whole and unprocessed, and you could be a whole and unprocessed, you know, person, depending on what your definition of processing is, I like to say, uh, minimally processed and we'll leave the minimally processed up to your imagination if you think minimally processed is juicing some people don't agree with juicing so juicing could be outside their outside their process it could include the process so but should be minimally processed because we don't want to like take in fractionated and turn into like some liquid or who knows what and concentrate and all this stuff so uh, we're gonna vote now on should be minimally or not processed how's that all right I think we got that one Right. Minimally or not processed was that one. Yes, you got another one. It, is, it applies to heat also, but pasteurized, pasteurization. Should not be pasteurized. Yeah. That's an excellent one. That would be kind of like yeah. not heat above 18, 118, but let's talk about that for a second because this is cool. So for you guys that know and many of you guys may not know, any almond that is now grown in California by law must be pasteurized uh, to sell it. And it, it could still, still be labeled raw. So the thing is, the raw pasteurized almonds could be heat pasteurized, so that would meet this criteria, but there's even a more sinister way that they pasteurize nuts is by chemicals. So I think we should definitely add, so should we add not be pasteurized on uh, number five? So that's, you know, I think it's terrible that they're now pasteurizing and doing all this stuff and it's all because they don't want, they don't want to pay extra money if they get an E. coli or something outbreak because of their crappy farming practices literally caused by the 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 poop they're putting on the on the on the plants because you know you can't get e coli from vegetables and it's only usually when there's some contamination from an animal based product that these breakouts occur so we'll put on there not pasteurized all right we're up to number six yes no added chemicals. Right, no added chemicals. That's an extra, excellent one. So like even on some dried fruits, actually many dried fruits, they often add sulfur as a preservative to keep it looking nice and keep it last longer or whatever and keep it chewy. So should we add up there by show of hands, no added chemicals. All right, we'll do it. No added chemicals.
So no added chemicals, number seven. Anybody have any other ones? Yes. Oh, that's a good one. So uh, the, the one is tends to spoil or short shelf life. I mean, after all, how many people have seen that like YouTube video where they buy a McDonald's hamburger and they film it like 10 years later and it looks the same or something or heard about that? I mean, we want to eat things that spoil because foods that are natural foods that ha don't have preservatives will spoil. Everything spoils. So by show of hands, should spoil or should have a short shelf life? All right, all right I think we got that one. Okay, short shelf life or should spoil. Number eight. Anybody? Yes. Nutrient dense. Nutrient dense. I love that one. So, uh, so nutrient dense. For those that are not familiar with the term of nutrient dense, what that means really specifically is like if you go to McDonald's and you eat a Big Mac or most things on their menu, those things are really calorically dense. They have a lot of calories, meaning you know, uh, fat protein, carbohydrates, but they don't have a lot of nutrients like vitamin D, vitamin A, you know, thiamine, riboflavin, trace minerals, you know, antioxidants, phytochemicals, phytonutrients like lutein or zeaxanthin that are found in like the marigolds we're going to plant in the garden that you can't eat the petals. So should a raw food be nutrient dense by show of hands? I think we got that one, nutrient dense. All right, so that was nutrient dense. For nutrient density, I'll interject really quick. If you go to any Whole Foods market, um, in the Whole Foods market, they're using what's called the Andy scoring system. How many people have heard of that? A handful. So the Andy scoring system stands for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index. And in any Whole Foods market, they'll have like a list or at least an abbreviated list of the nutrient density on most produce items they have it and some bulk items they have it. Unfortunately, for most other processed food items in their store, they do not have it because it would make it look really bad. But basically, this is a system that Dr. Joel Furman came up with, and he's a medical doctor that uh, preaches a whole foods, plant-based diet. And he rates foods on a scale from one to a thousand, and how he got the number is he took the nutrients in there, meaning the known nutrients, and uh, extrapolated that the known and the unknown nutrients and the calorie ratio and he calculated what are the most healthiest foods and he found that the most nutrient dense foods, the list goes from a thousand to like zero or one. And at a thousand, we have things like kale, collard greens, watercress, things like that, the dark leafy greens. And then like at a one is like a soda. So we want to be eating high nutrient dense foods like the leafy greens are the, the top of the list. Then next are like the fruits. And then we get into like other things. So does anybody have another criteria we got to add onto the list? Unfiltered. So I would say like we could kind of lump that into the minimally processed because pro filtering is a process. <laughs> and of course, this is the this is the list we're coming up as a collective group. And if you have other ones that you think should be up here, feel free to add them to your own personal list. So I think the next thing I'll kind of interject one here. One of the things, one of my criteria that's like really important to me is because I almost lost my life is, um, is it health building? Because I'm eating the raw foods for my health. I want to put things in my body that are gonna build my health and not detract from it. So I'll end up back in the hospital. Maybe if you're into weight loss, you know, one of your criteria could be, is it gonna help me to lose weight? Or, you know, so should we put, um, is it health building on our list? I think we got that one. Yes, health building. Is it health building or just been health building? All right, we're at 10. Maybe let's try to go to 12. Think we could do it? I want to hear a yeah on three. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Yeah, I was reading actually some nut butter. We'll talk about that. But, so blanching is just like a heating process. 
a lot of heat for a short period of time, and I'd probably call that not heated above 118 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, so according to my research, because I've gone to like the trade shows and I asked the companies that make frozen vegetables, all frozen vegetables are blanched. So if you're trying to do all raw and really anal about it, technically uh, frozen vegetables are not really raw. But they're still very healthy, healthier than probably most other things you could eat. And I don't necessarily recommend that people eat 100% raw like, like crazily, because it might, that actually in itself might not be so healthy. Yeah. Oh, that's good. How would, how would we word that? So the, the criteria is shouldn't contain substances that harm us. Non-toxic. I think that's good. Non-toxic even if it's even natural. Because <laughs> yeah. it can still be natural and be toxic. Yeah, right. No natural toxins? No naturally occurring toxins. I guess, and then you gotta leave up to your imagination what, how you want to define toxins, because that, we could talk about that for a long time. So how many people would agree that we should put no naturally occurring toxins on our list? <coughs> I think we got the majority. No naturally, Occurring toxins. So let's see, why don't I interject another one? One of my favorite ones to put is um, water rich. So I believe, in my definition of raw, anyways, uh, raw food should be water rich because, after all, we are, you know, whatever, 65 to 75 percent water, and, you know, foods that don't have that much water content dehydrate us. And we all know that being dehydrated is not good and can cause many issues. So how many people would agree that uh, should be water rich or is water rich? All right, I think we got the majority, thank you. All right, getting down to number 12. Yes. So yeah, dehydrated foods are not water rich. Okay. So hold that question and we'll see how that works into this whole scheme of things in a minute. Let's see if I could come up with one more. Yeah, one in the corner over there. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, um, also what about anything packaged? Because there are, I mean, like you said, there's raw foods in the stores that are packaged and manufactured. That's a good one. Yeah, so, so like... Anything manufactured or packaged? anything in a package all right so that's a good point so I posted this on my Facebook page and actually one of the guys actually I know he put on there like anything a package is not raw and that may be you know in your definition but let's put it up to the vote of the group to see if that's in our definition or not because I, I mean every group's different it may be in your own personal list but it might not make it up here so you know I'm not gonna debate that but we're just gonna put it up to the vote so what are, what are some of the things that are raw that are packaged that you know well, we'll get into that, but let's just vote on um, if something in a package could be considered raw. So what does raw mean? It means not in a package. So many people would want to see not in a package on our list. I don't think we got that one. That's kind of like pretty hardcore there. <laughs> All right, so the, the, the last thing that I think that I, that I would want to put on my list, it's really important to me, you know, some people might call it enzymatically active. I mean, that would... That would be implied and not heated above 118 degrees, but what I would want to put instead is has life force. Because to me, the life force, energy, whether you believe in it or not, whether that's the enzymes or not, I mean, life begets life is what I think. You know, if we eat things that are alive, the live foods, the raw foods, then we're going to be alive. And if we eat things that are not alive, like dead piece of flesh, then maybe we're not going to be alive for so long either. So uh, how many people agree that we should put um, has life force, contains life force. Okay, I think we got that one and we're down to 12. I think we're good. Has life force. However you want to define life force. I would define life force as if like you put it in Acrylian photography, you'd see like the energy emanating from the object. All right, so that was not too difficult. Now that we got our list, now is the fun part. 
we're gonna open up my little box here and just some things that I tried to round up. I used to bring a few things with me all the time to give this talk, but I didn't really plan on giving this talk because I'm just in town for the a short weekend. I go home tomorrow actually, and we've got a lot done while I'm here and got to give a talk too. So uh, these are just some random items, and once we go through these items, you could feel free to, you know, uh, we'll, we'll take some items to put in, uh, put up to the criteria. So the first thing we'll put up to the criteria is what I had for breakfast today. <laughs> An orange. So let's put our orange, uh, actually from the, the co-op, up to our list. What does raw mean? Is this not heated above 118 degrees? Yes. Is it not irradiated? Yes. Is it not GMO? Yes. Is it minimally or not processed? Yes. Is it not pasteurized? Yes. Is it no added chemicals? Yes. Is it short shelf life should spoil? Some of the ones in the box are spoiling. <laughs> is it nutrient dense? Yes. Is it health building? Yes. Is it no naturally occurring toxins? Yes. Is it water rich? Yes. Does it have life force? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be strict about it. How do you know it's not GMO? Well, we just have to trust because it's organic. Okay. I mean, in, from my research, they're not GMOing oranges yet. Now, if this was a, if this was a corn, you know, I might not say yes as confidently. I might say maybe or we don't know, and that's just the honest answer because we just don't really know. Unless you grow anything yourself with the seeds, you really don't know. But you know, I, to my knowledge, they're not GMOing oranges. I'm not like the super crazy conspiracist person. I mean, you could think everything's GMO, then you gotta grow your own food underneath greenhouse domes so that the chemtrails don't get on it, but I'm not that crazy yet. Anyways. <laughs> so let's go with uh, one of my other foods here. It's not my favorite food, but it's Kyle's favorite food. Where's Kyle? <laughs> Kyle eats lots of bananas, so let's put out the bananas to the list. All the bananas, is it not heated above 118 degrees? Yes, not irradiated, not GMO. Minimally processed, not pasteurized, no added chemicals, short shelf life should spoil, yes, nutrient dense, health building, no naturally occurring toxins, water rich, has life force, yes. So you can see uh, basically any fruit we'll put up to the list would all be yes. We'll skip the apples because we already know what's going to happen. <laughs> How about the tomatoes? We'll probably skip the tomatoes because we could easily see if those were yes, this is all going to be yes too. But we'll put up something like an onion. Because believe it or not, onions can be quite controversial. So is this onion uh, not heated above 118 degrees? Yes. Is it not irradiated? Yes. Is it not GMO? Is it minimally or not processed? Is it not pasteurized? Is it no added chemicals? Is it short shelf life should spoil? Is it nutrient dense? Is it health building? <laughs> Yeah, right? Maybe. <laughs> I heard some maybe. Some people might say yes. So yeah, I mean, that's the honest answer to you or to whatever. It's Is it help building? Maybe, because some people say there's naturally occurring toxins in here. Some other people would say those naturally occurring toxins are actually healthy for us because they may present, prevent things like cancer. So these two may be, maybe yes, maybe no, maybe maybe, depending on your point of view on it. I'm not going to debate that tonight either. Is it water rich? Yes. And does it have life force? Yes. So now you can see on this onion, it's like, John, what am I not supposed to eat onions, man? It didn't have all yeses. I can't eat this anymore. Well, that's not the point of this exercise. And as we go through some more of these, you'll kind of see more of the point and then I'll explain it. So now let's get into something. Uh, oh, really cool. These guys. So if you live here in Houston or somewhere like where it's hot in the summertime, like in California or even like Las Vegas where I'm at right now, um, you want to grow these guys. These are called rubra spinach or red or red malbar spinach. There's also a green variety. These are one of the leafy greens that will grow excellently in the hot summer. So if I was to pick a leaf, and I won't do that to this baby plant because if we want it to have its full leaves so it could photosynthesize and grow faster. If I picked a leaf of this plant and ate it, does it have? Is it not heated above 118 degrees? Is it not irradiated? Is it not GMO? Is it minimally not processed? Is it not pasteurized? There are no added chemicals. Is it short shelf life should spoil? Is it nutrient dense? Is it health building? Is it no naturally occurring toxins? Is it water rich? And does it have life force? The life force is off the charts, man. It's still living. I can eat it. Maybe I'll eat it. All right, I ate a little bit. <laughs> Woo! All 
All right. Now this is where we get into some packaged foods. Wait, did we put, we didn't put packaged foods on there. That didn't make the list. So what's the first packaged food that's fun? How about this one? So honey, and we didn't put is it vegan on the list because this wouldn't have made it. So local Lone Star Liquid Gold Texas Best Home Honey. I don't know if this says raw in here. It doesn't say raw in the package. So keep that in mind as we answer our questions. Is it not heated above 118 degrees? The honest answer is we don't know. It may or may not be. It doesn't say raw. So, if you know, I would feel that it probably is heated, but I don't know. But just because it's raw doesn't mean it's not heated above 118 for honey. You know, the honey industry may have their own definition of that. Is it not irradiated? It's probably, I mean, it's a local honey. It's probably not irradiated. Is it not GMO? It's probably not GMO. Is it minimally or not processed? I don't know, honey in the comb would be totally minimally or not processed. They had to heat this up or spin it out or do something to get in the bottle and filter it because it would be a lot more junk in there. Is it not pasteurized? We hope so, but we don't really know. I mean, is it no added chemicals? I don't know if you didn't make the honey in your backyard and you know what's happening, you're not spraying your bees with miticides and stuff, we don't really know. Is it a short shelf life should spoil? Well, honey has naturally occurring things in it that'll actually keep it uh, good for a long time, but it will spoil at some point. Is it nutrient dense? You know, I'd say it's generally more nutrient dense than some of the other concentrated sweeteners on the market. Is it health building? Depends who you ask. <laughs> some people would say honey's the best thing since sliced bread. Some people say it's bee vomit. <laughs> I mean, that's what some people say. I'm just saying it. Is it no naturally occurring toxins? I, I think so. Is it water rich? No, because if it was water rich, it would spoil faster. I mean, the bees actually flap their wings to heat it up so that it evaporates the water, and that's why it makes it concentrate. Because what this is, this is literally nectar of the flowers with the water removed. So we should all be eating flower nectar. And I like to pick my pineapple sage flowers. You hummingbirds like to stick their beak down this nice narrow flower and at the, the, the uh, base of it, if you pick it, there's a little white part, you eat it, it's sweet. And I wish I could just like take millions of those and juice it, it'd be insane. But so if you want to have that in a concentrated form, I guess you gotta let the, the bees do it because it's a lot of work. So uh, no naturally occurring toxins, water rich, does it have life force? I don't know, we'd have to Korean photography it and see, but if it's heated, it might not have as much life force as if it was straight out of the hive in the comb. So now you can see like, man, you have a couple yeses, you have a couple noes, you have a couple maybes, you have a couple I don't knows. John, you're confusing me, man. Are we supposed to eat honey? I don't know. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, let's do this one, man. This is gonna be fun. So this is the organic, once again, raw, creamy almond butter. And it says USDA organic, and on the list it says, Raw, unblanched, organic almonds. And that's the only ingredients. And it says raw, and it says product of the USA. So if it says product of the USA, you could assume that the almonds probably came from California because they don't really grow almonds too many other places in commercial quantities. And so knowing that, and it says gluten-free, vegan, kosher, organic, and raw. So let's put this raw creamy almond butter up to the test. Is it not heated above 118 degrees? I don't know, do we know? It says like unblanched organic almonds, but technically almonds are pasteurized to be able to be sold, to be sold. So we don't really know. I would, I would personally think yes, but I don't know. I, I, we don't know really. Uh, not irradiated. Well, according to if it's organic, it should not be irradiated. Is it not GMO? If it's organic, it should not be GMO. Is it minimally or not processed? It depends if you think grinding up almonds is minimal or not. I mean, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably say yes. Is it not pasteurized? Well, these almonds might be pasteurized. Does it have no added chemicals? Yes. Does it have a short shelf life should spoil? How many people have ever had almond butter go bad on them? I think it like, I used to eat it faster than it would spoil. I don't know. Is it nutrient dense? Yeah, yeah I'd say yeah. Is it health building? Yeah, I mean, maybe in, I mean, if you ate this whole jar, it probably wouldn't be too health building, but, you know, it depends how much you eat, I guess. 
Is it no naturally occurring toxins? Well, if they're not soaking their nuts, man, it might have enzyme inhibitors in the shell that are now, you know, fractionated now in this butter. I don't know. It depends how paranoid you want to get. Is it water rich? No, because it would spoil if it was. Does it have life force? I don't know. <laughs> a sprouted almond would have much more life force than this, so you know, might want to buy almonds, sprout them, and then grind them into nut butter, and it'd still be moist, and then have water too. I'd be better than this, but I don't know. All right, let's get into some controversial stuff here. I think you guys are getting bored here. So, uh, how about this one? Cacao nibs. So it says, organic raw cacao nibs. So organic raw cacao nibs, is it not heated above 118 degrees? Maybe. We don't know, because there's no legal definition of raw. Raw doesn't mean not heated above 118 degrees. It means whatever the manufacturer wants it to. Maybe they heated it. Maybe it's just not roasted, like in the case of, like, raw cashews or even raw almonds in the bulk bins now they've totally been heated hotter than 118 but it says raw on it so the answer is we don't know there's some people that say oh yeah our our cat cacao nibs are raw but nobody else's are because we have the special ones or is that just marketing crap they just want to sell their product instead of other stuff i don't know is it not irradiated well it says usda organic so that should mean non irradiated if it's not gmo once again it says organic should not be GMO is it minimally or not processed it depends I mean you got to take the cacao fruit open it up take off the pulp then you got to take off the little test of skin off the cacao uh, then you got to dry it or ferment it and then you got to uh, crack it up to make the nibs so if that's if that's minimal to you then yes if not no is it not pasteurized we hope so is it no added chemicals we hope so. I have heard that they can't. There may be bug parts in the in the cacao and stuff. Um, does it have a short shelf life? Should spoil? I don't know. Does this stuff spoil? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I think probably keep it for almost ever. Is it nutrient dense? Some people would say yes. Is it health building? Maybe. Some people would say yes. Some people would say no. Is it no naturally occurring toxins? I would say it has naturally occurring toxins. I mean, once again, this is the seed of a plant. We could eat, we could open the cacao fruit and eat the fruit and actually taste good, I've tasted it. But if we take the raw bean out, it tastes very bitter and you'd probably just spit it out. Once again, no animals that I've seen like eat the cacao beans in there because once again, the cacao tree wants to you know, um, proliferate and reproduce so it has naturally occurring toxins in there. Just because we ferment it or think it tastes good because it's bitter, you know, is that good or not? You know, I'll leave that to you because I'm not going to debate that. But in my opinion, it does have naturally occurring toxins. Is it water rich? Not. Does it have life force? Probably not as much as like a fresh one right out the tree that I've eaten before. So now are you guys thoroughly confused about what this whole thing is about? Because we got yes, no, maybe, and it's like there's no clear definition. Does that happen to some of you guys? Yeah. All right, let's just do one last thing. I mean, I got things like salt in here and I got things like organic palm sugar this doesn't say actually raw on it but some do we got some uh, sun-dried figs this will be fun so these sun-dried figs that are organic and it says specifically sun-dried so are these sun-dried figs not heated above 118 degrees yes because they're sun-dried and if they are sun-dried is it not irradiated and these are organic yes is it not GMO is it minimally or not processed I'd say sun-drying I mean the the fruit could be on the tree and then the sun could hit it and then and then it's dried. I mean, that, I'd say that's minimally processed. Is it not pasteurized? Yes. Is it no added chemicals? Yes, we hope so. Is it a short shelf life should spoil? Yes. Is it nutrient dense? Yes. Is it health building? Yes. Is it no naturally occurring toxins? Yes. Is it water rich? No. Is it have life force? Yeah, I don't know. It has not as much life force as a fresh fig. <laughs> I mean, we could go on and on. We got things like uh, Kara powder. I got some Laura bars. I got that uh, raw revolution bar thing here. Basically, what's going to happen if we just put this up to the list, the test. I mean, this has organic dates, organic cashews, organic sunflower seed kernels, organic agave, nectar, organic almonds, organic sprouted flax seeds. But any food product we'll put up to this list we're either going to get a couple things all yeses which in my opinion 
that's probably something you want to eat because that's undisputed. Basically, if you put any fruit or vegetable that's fresh up to this list, you'll get all the S's. So that's cut and dry, easy. You should probably eat it. Now, on the flip side, if we put a McDonald's hamburger up to this list or something else, we probably get almost like all no's or mostly all no's. So if you get all no's or mostly all no's, then you probably don't want to eat it. Now, the other, now, now we have the two ends. Now we just got to have something in the middle. So it's like, John, now what about all the things that are some yes and some no, some maybe, some I don't knows? So uh, here's how I'll break it down for you guys to sum this up really quick. So how I look at this list is if I was just to eat something with all yeses, I'd basically be eating fruits and vegetables. And you know, just, you know, I do want to recommend that the majority of your diet is fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and water-rich foods. Now, do I eat some things on this list that I may have a no for? You know, absolutely. But here's the thing. So, I mean, you could take this list, you know, you're in the health food store and then you like pull it out. Okay, I'm gonna get out of my list. Boom, 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 you're sitting there. Maybe you talk to yourself like I do sometimes because I'm just, we all talk to ourselves, just sometimes we just don't do it out loud. I happen to do it out loud sometimes, so don't think I'm weird. <laughs> like, man, John's going down this list. What's, what's that guy doing? So, so you won't feel weird in the health food store when you're going through this list yourself mentally or out loud. What I like to do is just minimize this list down to the three most important things to you. So whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you just definitely don't want GMOs, whether you know it has to be health building because you almost lost your life like I did. You know, so for me, the top three on this list are uh, health building because I almost lost my life. I don't want to lose my life. Uh, number two, is it water rich? I mean, the fact of the matter is we are 65 to 75% water. I want to maintain my high water percentage because if you're not fully hydrated and have uh, dehydration, that can cause a lot of issues. And the last one that's important for me is has life force. Because I want to eat things that are alive and life begets life. So now, whatever three for you, you want to remember those and that's not hard to do, remember three things. And then any food you pick up at the health food store, whether it says raw or not raw, put up those three criteria and here's how I work it. So a lot of the criteria that I would, that I would, that I would put, my, put foods up to is it health building? Is it water rich? And does it have life force? Obviously, once again, any fruit or vegetable would be obviously yes. And would there be a, a packaged food that I might eat? So like, this is actually something I travel with. Um, I got it as a, at, at a, as a free sample at a trade show and I haven't eaten it yet. I don't know, the expiration date is 7, 2015. I think I've had it in my bag for like a half year and I'll dig into this if like I'm totally starving and I'm on an airplane, I'm in the middle of nowhere and there's no other food. <laughs> But this is a nutrient rich, so we know it meets the nutrient rich one. Maca powder, superfood of the Inca warriors even. <laughs> and it's by Sun Food, a raw food company. It's uh, non-GMO and organic. So if I put this red maca powder up to my list, okay, John, is it health building? Uh, I'd probably say yes. <laughs> is it water rich? No. Does it have life force? Not as much as the maca that I'm growing in my garden right now, and I'm gonna have a nice maca root, and I'll make a video of that when I harvest it and eat it raw. So, so like, John, this has two no's and one yes, man. You still gonna eat it? <laughs> well, if I'm in the middle of nowhere, there's no fresh fruits and vegetables, and I'm really hungry, and I gotta eat something? Yes, <laughs> because it's health building, and I don't wanna lose my health, because there may be nutrients in here that might not be in something else. You know, another thing that I might eat is like spirulina or algae powders. Algae powders would be in a similar pack like this and I don't actually have any in my backpack because I eat the algae powders before I eat the maca. <laughs> and they're gone so I can't show you guys any and I, gotta, I got some more at home I gotta put in my bag. So is algae powders health building? In my opinion, absolutely. Does it also contain toxins? Some people would say yes. Is it water rich? No, but I usually add it to water on the airplane and make a little green drink and drink it. Does it have a life force? Well, not as much as like fresh algae powders, but you know, number one for me is health building. So I believe it can add to my health and not subtract to it. Of course, some people would say that algae powders are pond scum and that it's not good for your health. So, you know, we're not gonna debate that tonight, but just to know that I would eat it because I do think it's health building. So whatever the food is, I encourage you guys to just think critically, do your own research, have the three criteria that's most important to you so that you at least know, have some criteria to judge if it's a raw food according to your definitions because once again, the industry does not have a legal definition of raw foods and there's so many packages coming out each and every day that's labeled raw that in my opinion, you know, I probably would not eat or put into my body.
does anybody have any questions about this system, about this method that we just went over tonight? Is everybody clear on, on this? And I mean, it is really simple. Break this list down to your three most important things before you buy anything, put anything in your mouth. Ask yourself the questions real quick and try to get all three yeses, then you know you could eat it. If it's all three no's, then you probably aren't gonna eat it. If it's yes, no, no, yes, maybe, maybe, then think a little bit harder about it. And with these tips and techniques, I'm confident that you'll definitely be eating a healthier diet than you were before you came here tonight. Thank you. Congratulations, you guys made it to the end. I'm impressed, that was definitely a long talk, but I surely hope it was worth your time. I mean, I know it was worth mine to give the presentation, to think up the presentation, and now to edit it and put it on YouTube for that all you guys that could not make this particular presentation could now view it and it could change your lives as well. I mean, you know, I want you guys once again to learn to think for yourselves and you know, teaching in this method, it gets people thinking, which I think is only a good thing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your friends. Also, if you're not already subscribed to me, be sure to click the subscribe button. I'll put a link right up above so that you can be notified of all my future videos that basically teach the nuts and bolts of raw foods and a healthy plant-centric diet and how you can do it too. The final thing I'd like to say is that I want every, each and everyone that listens to me talk right now, put a comment down below the video with your top three criteria on what a raw food is to you after watching this episode that can help benefit others. I know I will. So once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh, ripe, and raw fruits and vegetables. They're the best.